Welcome to the channel of NZ Justice 111. This is episode 9 in the series, The Names of Who Corrupt New Zealand and What They Don't Want You to Know. Without further delay, here we go with episode 9. In this episode, NZ Justice 111 will be exposing proof via a taped recording that court managers criminally altered Ministry of Justice court records to hide the fact that Senior Sergeant and his barrister Janice Harland had, with the assistance of Lynch, unlawfully used unfiled evidence to obtain judgments against Lisa and her mother Rose. For those of you watching who do not know how serious this is, this channel gives you the following information. As any prudent lawyer would tell you, it is a well-held rule of the New Zealand courts that before you are able to use an affidavit in court as evidence, the original pen-signed affidavit must be filed in the court. In legal terms, this is called a wet ink original affidavit. It is only after an original affidavit has been sworn and filed into the court are you then legally permitted to use a photocopy of that affidavit as evidence in court. As proof of this, here is a screenshot of section 156 of the Family Court Rules. This is a standard rule that applies in all courts throughout New Zealand. As proof of this, here is a second screenshot, this time of the High Court Rules regarding affidavits. And did Christopher Lynch file his original affidavit into the court after swearing it? No, he did not. But what he did do was give a photocopy of his unfiled affidavit to Senior Sergeant and Barrister Janice Harland so they could unlawfully use the photocopy as evidence in court against Lisa and her mother Rose. You will see absolute proof of this during this episode. As exposed to you in the last episode, Senior Sergeant filed an application in the family court asking a judge to order Lisa and Rose not be allowed access to nearly quarter of a million dollars of Lisa's trust property sold. This being the fraudulent loans Senior Sergeant had criminally claimed in court that Lisa's trust owed him. On the 25th of March 2011, three days before the hearing to decide Senior Sergeant's fraudulent application, his barrister Janice Harland filed in the court a memorandum of submissions and a copy of Lynch's unfiled affidavit. If you do not know what submissions are used for, Put simply, it gives the judge a background of your case. Submissions also record court judgments that you rely on and legal reasons why you should win. On the 28th of March 2011, a hearing was held before family court judge Margaret Rogers, whereby barrister Janice Harland used the copy of Lynch's unfiled affidavit as senior sergeant's main evidence against Lisa and Rose. Even worse, Lisa and Rose, as was Judge Rogers, completely unaware that Sandy Bailey, Lisa's new barrister, was keeping a deceitful secret that she knew, as proven by evidence in the last episode, that Lisa's former professional trustee for her trust, Lynch, was still unlawfully hiding 13 files belonging to Lisa and her trust, and had refused to release those files. The same day as the hearing, Judge Rogers, after listening to the malicious lies of Senior Sergeant and his barrister regarding alleged loans owed by Lisa's trust, and after Sandy Bailey had helped them by keeping dishonestly quiet about Lynch hiding Lisa and her trust's files, and after a copy of Lynch's unfiled affidavit had been unlawfully used as Senior Sergeant's main evidence, Judge Rogers ordered that Lisa and Rose not be entitled to access $208,000 out of the sale proceeds of Lisa's trust property if it's sold. In legal terms, this is called a restraining order. NZ Justice 111 points out that Judge Rogers granted Senior Sergeant's malicious restraining order using the Property Relationships Act. That Senior Sergeant, as per the terms of the fully signed prenup, was forbidden to use in court against Lisa. After Judge Rogers delivered her decision, Lisa heard less and less from her barrister, Sandy Bailey. On the 25th of May 2011, Lisa found out that the family court had ordered her to pay money to Senior Sergeant. She had no idea what this was for and emailed Sandy Bailey. Barrister Bailey ignored Lisa and would not reply to any of her texts or phone calls. After being ignored so many times, Lisa on the 3rd of June 2011 hired a new lawyer who worked for the law firm Villiant Hooker and Partners. 
Lisa's new lawyer, Vincent Sandy Bailey, an authority to uplift all of Lisa's files. NZ Justice 111 has not shown you the name of this new lawyer, as they have done nothing wrong. And what did Barrister Sandy Bailey do when she found out that Lisa had hired a new lawyer? She kept deceitfully quiet about an up-and-coming hearing in the family court where Senior Sergeant and his barrister, Janice Harland, were asking a judge to throw out Lisa and Rose's defence and give Senior Sergeant a judgement that ordered Lisa and Rose to pay him the total of his fraudulent loans. The excuse used by Senior Sergeant and his barrister to try and get this malicious judgement was that Lisa had consistently ignored court orders which had directed her to hand over copies of her legal documents to Senior Sergeant. On the 14th of June 2011, a hearing went ahead before Family Court Judge Gregory Haikaka, with Lisa, her mother Rose and Lisa's new lawyer knowing nothing about this hearing, compliments of corrupt barrister Sandy Bailey. True to form, Barrister Bailey, just as she had done to Judge Rogers, stayed dishonestly quiet to Judge Haikaka that Christopher Lynch was still unlawfully hiding 13 of Lisa's and her trust files, which held the very documents Lisa needed to copy and give to Senior Sergeant. Because of Barrister Bailey's deceit, Judge Haikaka unjustly accused Lisa of non-compliance with court orders by refusing to give Senior Sergeant copies of her legal documents. Judge Haikaka also warned Lisa that if she did not comply this time and give Senior Sergeant the documents he wanted, Lisa's defence would be thrown out, with Senior Sergeant then being able to file more evidence and attend a short hearing so he could get the judgement he wanted. Judge Haikaka also ordered that Lisa pay Senior Sergeant $1,000 for ignoring court orders to do with giving him copies of her documents. Once again, the fully signed prenup that forbade Senior Sergeant using the Property Relationships Act against Lisa was completely ignored by yet another judge. NZ Justice 111 now comes to the part in this video that shockingly exposes Court Manager Calvin Smiley, with the assistance of Court Manager Tracy Marsh, criminally altering court records to cover up the fact that Christopher Lynch never filed his original affidavit into the court and that a photocopy of this unfiled affidavit had, for six years, been used against Lisa and Rose right up to Supreme Court. Senior Sergeant and Christopher Lynch's use of this unfiled evidence to win in court against Lisa and Rose meant every judgement these two corrupt individuals won was absolutely affected to such a degree that all judgements that relied upon this unfiled evidence would have to be null and voided. In legal terms, this is called setting aside a judgment. To make sure all fraudulently obtained judgments handed down against Lisa and Rose were protected from having to be null and voided, Ministry of Justice court computer records were criminally altered to falsely record Lynch's 25th of March 2011 original affidavit had been filed into the court. This channel now gives you a quick background of the reason why two court managers who obviously support corruption in New Zealand, decided it was a very good idea to criminally alter Ministry of Justice court computer records. Here we go. In late 2015, Lisa visited the court to go through her files and discovered that the original of Christopher Lynch's 25th of March 2011 affidavit was nowhere on the files. She then asked a court registrar to check on the court's computer to see if Christopher Lynch's affidavit had been recorded as an incoming document. Lisa saw every screen on the computer as the registrar was searching. Lynch's affidavit was not recorded on the court's computer. Lisa then left and thereafter contacted the court to request a letter confirming Lynch's original affidavit was not on the court files. On the 21st of August 2015, court service manager Tracy Marsh sent Lisa a letter confirming Lynch's original affidavit was not held on the court files. However, there was a photocopy of the affidavit. This is the copy that Lynch had cunningly given Senior Sergeant's barrister Janice Harland, who had then filed the copy of the affidavit with her submissions as you saw earlier in this episode. After Lisa received court manager Marsh's letter, she then asked to be sent a printout of the Ministry of Justice court computer records, which also confirmed Lynch's original affidavit had never been filed into the court. Before Lisa was able to get the computer printout, court manager Calvin Smiley told court manager Tracy Marsh to go into the court's computer and alter the records 
which then falsely showed Lynch's affidavit had been filed into the court on the same day as he swore it, that being the 25th of March, 2011. Lisa found out what had been done and immediately contacted court manager Calvin Smiley. While talking to Smiley on the phone, Lisa turned her dictaphone on and began to record the conversation. Here is the recording. Lisa's voice has been altered, but Calvin Smiley's has not. You will clearly hear, but certainly not limited to, court manager Calvin Smiley admitting that Lynch had never filed his original affidavit into the court and that he had told court manager Marsh to go into the court's computer and alter the records. To make matters worse, this was a closed file. Calvin. Hi, I've, um, I hope I've answered the questions. Um, we've sent the, a letter to you on the 21st of August that actually sets out exactly what you wanted to hear from us. No, I want that. I tell you what, Calvin, I'm going to go further with this because that Tracy Marsh has gone in there and altered Ministry of Justice records. She's added in that Christopher Lynch has filed that affidavit on the 25th of March. It wasn't there before. I've got a letter from her a couple of weeks ago saying it was not there. And yet she's gone in there and altered it. You are to take it off immediately. I'm not going to. I've got a letter from here from the 25th of August last year saying that... Are you supporting I, I, can I, I just read a staff member altering Ministry of Justice records to, to false claims? Because he hasn't filed his original. No, uh, we, we, there's a letter here saying that he hasn't. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. If you just let me finish the letter that I've got before me, I'll explain to you what it says, and I think that answers your question. And so on the 21st of August last year, um, Tracy Marsh wrote back to you saying, the registry has been asked to confirm that the original affidavit of Christopher Morris Lynch, sworn at Papakura on the 25th of March 2011, is on the court file. The registry has been unable to... Yeah, I've read it, Kevin. Document. Yeah. However, the registry can confirm that uh, there is a photocopy. And I think uh, listening to the things that you've said to me is that's the thing that you want us to say, that we don't have the original, but we do, there is a photocopy on the file. We don't even say when it was filed because we don't know. But um, it wasn't filed, Kevin. That's the whole point. No, I'm saying I'll talk about the, um, the, the photocopy. Well, oh, that was filed by Janice Harland. Yeah. So Were there um, submissions? The phone call became very heated, and after calming down, Lisa and court manager Smiley continued. You now have a staff member going into the Ministry of Justice computer and altering those records to record that the 25th March affidavit was indeed an incoming document. If you, if you are going to accuse someone of anything... Well, it's I, not accusing, it's fact, Calvin. Well, OK, well, I was just going to say that before we released that list of documents to you, I asked Tracy to make sure that every document that was on the file was recorded in CMS. So um, that's why that list came out. Well, you're recording an, an original affidavit being filed into evidence or being filed as an incoming, and it's not there, Calvin? Well, we've recorded that there's a document there that's called this. It's on the file. You know as well as I do that if any person reads that, it would, it, they would absolutely automatically presume yeah. that that original affidavit had been filed that day, and you know it damn well has not. Well, they presume that document is that that's right, and then there's a letter of the 21st of August. That why has it gone in there and been altered? Well, we had to alter. We had to, in Lynch's favour. No, we had to say that this is the state of the file. That's what we did. Then put copy beside it, Kelvin. We can't. Why not? You've already altered it once. The system doesn't allow us. It's a drop-down list. You can't amend a drop-down list. Take it out, Kelvin, or else I'll go further. Uh, I'm not going to amend the record. Okay, right. Thank you. I'll go further. Thanks. Call ended at half past twelve on the twenty-fourth of February, two thousand and sixteen. So there we have it. Both court managers Smiley and Marsh knew and still do that Lynch's original affidavit had never been filed into the court and that photocopies of this unfiled evidence had been unlawfully used time and time again as evidence in court to obtain fraudulent judgments against Lisa and her mother Rose. For any court managers to alter Ministry of Justice records to make it falsely appear as if an original affidavit has been filed into the court when clearly it has not, is, in NZ Justice 111's opinion, conduct deserving of criminal charges being laid against those managers. A link to this video has been sent to over 60 lawyers, as well as a large number of media reporters. The link has also been sent to New Zealand Minister of Justice Andrew Little and Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. Let's see if the corrupting of Ministry of Justice records by court managers gets their attention. 
NZ Justice 111's computers and our YouTube channel is being consistently hacked. Obviously whoever is behind this hacking does not want the ongoing corruption in New Zealand exposed to the general public. Before the hacker attempts to take down this video, please share it as quickly as you can. Until next time, keep safe.